You're listening to Conversations That Matter with your host, Terry Conrad. Hi, everybody. This is Terry Conrad with Conversations That Matter, and I am extremely honored today to have my guest, Seth Price. Uh, from Playster. Uh, Seth and I go back for a, a long ways, actually a few years now. I've been a big fan of Seth um, and his marketing initiatives. He clearly is a man who gets it in this industry. He has been a leader. He's a speaker. You, you can't miss him when he's on stage. He's usually in hot red pants. And I'm very, very honored to welcome you today. Thank you so much for joining me, Seth. Thanks for having me. I'm super psyched to chat with you. I always love chatting with you. <laughs> Ditto. I'm, I'm a little sketched out because your mic is bigger than my mic, but I'm going to try and keep it together. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. No, en- no envy there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So first of all, why don't you tell us exactly uh, what is your position at Playster and maybe yep. walk us through a little bit about Playster's had sort of a big year, and I thought maybe you would sort of walk us through that story a through little bit. Through the arc. Mm-hmm. Sure. So... I am the VP of sales and marketing here at Playster, and we've got a team that spans, you know, UX, UI folks that design things. They create the experience, they create the graphics, you know, everything from how you onboard to looking at an infographic or a slide share. And then we've got folks that write copy, um, and then we have folks that uh, write, like myself, you know, uh, opinion pieces and blog posts and how-to. Uh, we have video, so you know the whole gamut in that sort of marketing side. Well, I, and then, I should say you, you guys are in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is sort of HubSpot territory. It and is I, HubSpot territory. I kind of think of you guys yeah. sort of on the same level. So I am. Uh, I have lots of friends that work there. Um, also, their uh, VP of Sales, former VP of Sales, uh, Mark Roberts, is someone who I'm very friendly with. Totally admire what they do. It, you know, they were early on in the entire space and defining a catchphrase in inbound marketing, um, which I think is possibly a misnomer because it's Mm -hmm. not all inbound. I sort of, to me, I think more about content, but they're definitely uh, a company I admire a lot and folks that I admire. Um, So we also really focus on support and sales and we do, our support team is really engaged, so unlike a lot of technology companies, you can actually reach someone on the phone. Um, they don't shoo you away. Uh, we work uh, you know, from morning to night to answer the phone. We answer email. We have live chat because this industry is, I'd say, unlike a lot of verticals, is that our you know, the average age being 52 right. means that we're not dealing all with digital natives. Yeah. And so there's a lot of handholding that's needed. And so we decided early on that we would build the team under one umbrella. So sales, marketing, support, all under one, as opposed to separating it into silos. Interesting. I, I like that idea. And I, I mean, you're exactly right, because the average agent who is, you know, like and we keep hearing different numbers. I, the other day I heard it was 54 55, whatever the number might be for the day. Yeah, Yeah. clearly older, not digital native, as you said, who struggled to understand, like, and poor peanuts, when they started their business, probably, it was a completely different, uh, different situation. So getting them, I I can imagine it is a bit challenging communicating, you know, what you're trying to help them do if they don't fully understand technology. Yeah, I mean, I think that that is the real opportunity for technology companies today like we experience it with our with our gadgets so i don't know if you've ever tried to use something other than an iphone (laughs) what do you what do you use i I came from the blackberry and before that i'm trying to remember what it was called i can't even remember but it was quite large uh yeah so so you know the thing that apple is praised about so much is well they have beautiful design mm-hmm. but the real thing that they do is they simplify the complicated and the reason why they had gained so much market share a lot of complicated reasons they were early on in making you know music accessible but what they've done is made it so i can set up a new phone i can set up a new computer my mom can set up a new phone and a new computer and my daughter who's 9 years old can set up a new phone and change our passwords. So that's a huge yeah. age and demographic gap that they've made as easily accessible the technology to everyone across that span. Totally. And that's really the opportunity for any technology company today because we are overloaded with information. Mm-hmm. Like 
I don't know about you, but I don't read instructions. No. <laughs> exactly. Not typically men. I mean, men just don't read instructions. <laughs> yeah, but you just said, do you read instructions? No. <laughs> okay, I so. I ask my man. My man's supposed to tell me how to build no, it. No, I can figure things out, yeah. but I don't necessarily read the instructions right. unless I'm baffled. And then I'll open everything up and I'll read it. Right. But, but what I expect is that there's something intuitive about the things that I use so it actually works and that and that's really you know what we're striving for right and I and I so I, I'm a big fan of the Playster website which is as you said and the magic word is intuitive and, yeah. and, and simple and so like my father yeah. gave us a medallion when I was a kid that said show the iceberg with the water level and yeah. it said and it said see it s-i-b-k-i-s -S, see it big keep it simple yeah I am it a is, big fan It of wasn't that. a K-I-S-S -S there, right? It no, I know. K-I-S-S, okay. And, and I was 10 years old, so I thought it was quite brilliant. But yeah. <laughs> um, I, so I, you reached out to me, not, I guess, a few years ago, um, introducing me to the Playster website. And I, I, I'm trying to – like, how would you say you d differentiate from other website templated um, products? So there's – there's a multi-layered answer to that. I'd say the thing that we've strived to do is do what has happened in other verticals. So if we think of WordPress was the first, right? right? They basically commoditized the idea of, of building on the web using technology that was a combination of open source and not. And then layered on top of that, we had a, a whole bunch of companies that came after who have made it so easy to get online in other verticals. So if we think of Squarespace or Shopify or Wix or Weebly, fantastic tools that have reduced the price and the friction of presenting yourself on the web, you know, probably by 10,000%. So if you think, you know, 10 years ago, it cost you 20 grand to launch a site, and now you can get a Wix site that looks better than some of those 10-year-old sites for nothing, that's pretty amazing. And so when I think about our platform, one of the challenges that real estate professionals have is that the web is really confusing, mm -hmm. right? If you've ever used WordPress, it's lovely, and we build on WordPress because it's got immense power. Mm -hmm. But with all of those choices, that can really stop a person in their tracks. And what happens, they decide they want to launch a site. If they go the route of sort of DIY or DIFM, which is do it for me, and they hire a developer. Yes. Once they get the thing that they said that they wanted, they're stuck with it because they can't easily update it. It's not, it's not, it doesn't evolve with the time. Right. So, so what we've done, and which is very different than the majority of the market in real estate, is we've made a platform where you can launch a site in literally five minutes. And some will say that we've put a lot of bumpers on the site. Mm -hmm. And I'll be the first to agree with that because there's not a person that can't launch a site on our platform and have something beautiful that works on every device in five minutes. Right. And, and that was the goal because then you can always add features. Right. Like the thing to try and balance is not to have feature bloat, you know, not to create another top producer, right. which has some fantastic bells and whistles. But if you try and use it, you're like, Ooh, which portion of this am I going to utilize? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you don't come from any, like you have no sense of marketing or technology, then honestly, stripping yeah. down those, like, just is easier for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's, and they're beautiful. Let's be honest. They're quite beautiful, they are, they clean, beautiful. fresh. Yeah. Very and we're intuitive. Doing, we're doing some really cool stuff. Um, so part of launching a site, like you always need images. So what we did is we contracted uh, some photographers to take images that you know represent geography around the US. Right. And those are royalty free. So when you first set up your site, you need a slideshow. You probably haven't gone out to hire a professional photographer, mm -hmm. but we allow you to pick from a series of royalty free images to put on your site. They can be, you can use them forever. Yep. Or you can use them as a stand-in. You're like, hey, I'm on the coast. I want beaches. You choose all the beach scenery, and you've got this branded representation of yourself online without the friction that would normally come with sourcing a photographer, deciding on the creative, figuring out if it fits, choosing the right dimensions, making sure the, the size of the file is not too big so the site is slow. Like All of those things mm -hmm. are now 
not something you have to be concerned about. Which is so great. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, just make it easy for me, for God's sake. For God's sake, yeah. exactly. <laughs> easy, easier yeah. is better than more. Yes, I agree. And, and I think that as consumers, we have been sold a bill of goods that you need this, the laundry list of things like we mostly see when people compare products there's just like check boxes right they do the the three different prices and you line down all the different things yes yeah but if but if you study the data of what's used in a product there is 30 percent of a product that's actually used by humans well that's always the case it's like yeah. all the, it, who has time to dig through it, through it all and figure out exactly. all the things you should be doing anyway i mean by the way everyone's actually trying to work for a living not just, exactly. not just build websites and market themselves. Yes, that's so right. So challenging, it, you know, and I think particularly for agents who are independent, sometimes isolated, uh, really have no idea what they should yeah. even, what they don't even know, right? Like, I don't yeah. even know what I don't know. Exactly. So what questions do I even need to ask? So you guys are doing a great job of making that really easy for everyone and in a beautiful way, um, which I actually think is also very important. Uh, how you package it is actually really vital. Um, let's talk about how you've actually done something that I think is very interesting in terms of marketing for your own company, which is yeah. um, basically building an online university in terms of how to do marketing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love this approach. I think it's ingenious. You were really um, ahead of the curve on this one, and you, you called it quite a while ago. You said, I'm all in on marketing, on, on content marketing. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about your vision there and why that was – something that you thought was going to be really relevant for you, you and your company? So part of it is luck of the timing of the world that we have this, I'll call it content overload or information overload. Mm -hmm. And what worked in the past where you could, um, I used to call it spray and pray marketing. Yeah. You could just do a lot of branded you know, banner ads or paid advertising, mm -hmm. which is still a very useful tool, but you could get away with sort of building your company on that. Right. And what's happened now is that there's a lot of great products in the world and there's a lot of great information in the world. And our challenge at this point is sifting through that information and getting to the wheat and passing on the chaff. Yeah, right? I mean, That's absolutely. the biggest challenge. So challenging. You know, we were just talking about how we, we get stuck with our thousands of tabs open. I don't know about you, yeah. but like I'll, I'll start reading something, I get sidetracked, I have every intention of going back and reading it, but then next thing you know, I literally have 12 different articles that I'm in the middle of reading at any given yeah. time. So, you know, one of the things, I learned this really early on. Um, I've been sort of self-employed or started my own businesses and working from a very young age. So I was the child of a single parent. Um, he wasn't home a lot. So I, I was raised by my father, which was somewhat unusual. Yes. He's a professor um, and an artist. Oh, and, that makes sense. Okay. And so, uh, you know, I was tasked with, in many ways, taking care of the house. I learned how to do laundry when I was eight years old. I cooked all of our meals. I did our shopping. I helped balance our checkbook. That's what I did. And so the thing that I remember, um, one of the lessons that I learned from my father is like how you judge people. And you judge people by the respect that they give you, but also the value that they bring to the interaction. And he would say, we'd walk down the street, no matter what city we were in, and he was okay with giving a panhandler money if they did something, if they provided some value. Now that's a strange analogy, but I remember very distinctly going, oh, individuals can either add to your life or they can take away from it. Wow. And so I think about marketing in that same way. Like, none of us like to be sold to. Indeed. But we are really happy to go to a mechanic who is just totally takes care of our, like, the difference between going to a mechanic, a mechanic and getting your car back dirtier mm -hmm. than you took it there, mm -hmm. like grease on the thing, <laughs> yeah. and getting it cleaned and deliver it to your house and having a temporary car while you use it yep. is something that's really memorable. So what are those experiences that you can give to people digitally that create that same effect? And in our world, that's content. That's creating some value or utility that is useful to your target audience mm -hmm. that you can start to build relationship with. So really just transfer that concept 
to the digital world. And you've done it in a, in a remarkably successful way. Um, I mean, your content, first of all, obviously, there's a lot of fluff out there, yeah. right? Like there's a lot of noise, a lot of surface fluffy ideas about things. I yeah. would say that you do an, a stellar job of really giving us meat and potatoes in a very concise, very easily digestible way. Um, and, and like literally I could post something of yours every day where people would start to question if I'm not an affiliate and <laughs> because there's so much good well, content there. It really, it really is such a good content. So, um, so again, asking the question when you, when you went all in on content, yeah. you had an ulterior motive as well, which was to generate traffic and build yeah. your audience. So maybe walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, so that took, I don't want to say an enormous amount of trust of the co-founders because we started working together because we trusted each other. Mm -hmm. But it's it's when you're an organization and you're telling the organization that I'm going to start this activity that's going to take a lot of my time and a good portion of our resources and we're not going to see a result right away. But I promise you that if we do not stop, we will reap the benefits of that in more ways than just an individual sale. We'll build trust in the industry that we're in. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the promise of providing value forward. And you know, our grandparents used to do that if they ran stores, right? They would sometimes give the woman or whoever it was that needed something, food or you know, hardware on credit. Yep. When it wasn't really at their best financial interest, yes. but it was part of their community. And so I've always thought that this is this is the opportunity that we have to be real online. Like anyone can start a Facebook page, you can do Twitter, you can do all those things, but how do you actually create things that you are proud to share and that if you were in the other person's shoes, you would find exceptionally useful? Uh, and that, that's really the, the premise of what we try to do. I think that, and that comes across in everything that you do and, and you represent. I, I think the reason I'm so drawn to you, and we'll, we'll probably get into this a little bit more, but like you, you just emulate this. Um, I, I, in fact, let me backtrack. I used to say, that, like I used to talk about the village and our yeah. grandparents and like the old way of doing business. And those are things, those are values that really resonate with me. We weren't so, and I call it transactional thinking. Yeah. Right, where we, where we had like larger vision and there was sort of a village type style of, e of commerce where you yeah. know we all sort of took care of each other and that yeah. it all sort of worked out in the end, which isn't necessarily the most uh, profitable way to run a business, but it's a really, I, I think ultimately we get lost in measurements. We're so yeah. ultra focused on tracking and measuring every bloody thing that I think we do forget to go high, high up and take that sort of 10,000 foot view of the overall contribution and impact that we want to make. And, and then knowing and I, and I say knowing that it will convert yeah. because when you are truly focused on delivering value and uh, excellent experiences as you and place to do um that the business naturally evolves and it does establish trust and credibility yeah. inside a marketplace which you've done to a point where you've now generated a, a very large um uh funding yes class a funding and so why don't we talk a little bit about like how we've gotten to that point yes so when you create a business, you decide generally from the beginning whether you are going to bootstrap something, mm -hmm. self-fund it, or whether you're going to take outside investment. Right. And so this business was formed, we went through Techstars, which is um, a startup incubator, mm -hmm. got lots of amazing feedback, but the whole goal of that is we're building a business to scale it. I mean, we're, we are building a platform that we feel that can transform the real estate industry by putting technology that's easy to use in the hands of the agents and brokers that do business every day. Mm -hmm. Like our, when, when I think about real estate, I think that regardless of what happens with Zillow or Trulia or Realtor or Redfin, people need humans to do this transaction. And what has been left out of all of the investment in all of those platforms that I m mentioned, with possibly the exception of Redfin, is that the investment is not into empowering the agent or broker. Mm -hmm. It's 
has been into building another platform a la Facebook or Twitter or what have you to monetize on the backs of agents and brokers or the professionals in the space. Right. So our funding, we raised seed funding from a bunch of angel investors. Uh, that got us, you know, four guys in a room mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> working very, very long hours to get our initial customers, build our initial platform, you know, sort of get the kinks out of it. Mm -hmm. And then we did um, a little additional seed funding and then we did our Series A. So I think in total we've raised a little under $10 million yeah. uh, if you combine all that stuff together. That's huge. That's huge. And, 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 and walk me through the, the whole Hearst Corporation yes. situation. Well, I have to say we feel just so honored to be a part of the organization. Um, so I was an agent for about four years. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say it's by happenstance, but I became an agent because I was doing some uh, real estate investing mm -hmm. and I needed to do a 1031 tax exchange. So that's where you sell something, you have some assets. If you do it properly and file all the paperwork properly, you don't have to pay taxes on that transfer okay. because you don't actually put that money in your pocket. You're actually just reinvesting it. Okay. And I needed an agent to help me with that. Mm -hmm. And I went into a brokerage, introduced myself, you know, there's a guy I'm looking at properties, I actually knew what I wanted to buy, I needed someone to help me, and I received, was introduced to an agent who I now know was working phone duty yep. and desk duty, Yep. and she was my agent, but she knew zero about what I needed, Yep. and I was so frustrated. I mean, I was just beyond frustrated, because I think it was her first month. Oh, poor <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so that prompted me to get my license because I was like, you know, I'm my father calls me an autodidact. If I want to learn something, you I just I put my five or ten thousand hours into it yeah. until I figure the thing out. Right. And so I got my license and I found the best brokerage in our town. Uh, I live in Providence, Rhode Island and uh, fantastic brokerage, uh, residential properties. Sally Lapides is the founder and uh, broker of chart broker of record there um, fantastic and I learned a lot there and one of the things that I learned was um, how difficult it is to wear all of the hats Possibly. that people need to wear in this industry mm -hmm. and that was sort of I'll say my inspiration to start thinking about this so if we fast forward to where we are now mm -hmm. I used to wear my little realtor pen mm -hmm. this was more than 10 years, but I guess about 10 years ago. Yeah. And now we are in the member benefit program and we're a partner of them. It's, it's like, it's sort of unbelievable from our perspective. It's been a really great experience. And so but I think a lot of people don't really understand. Um, so Hearst Media, what's yeah. that like? What's the playster is working with Hearst Media? You are, you are now tackling uh, advertising and like all. We we do a lot of things. So yeah. if you think about a platform, what, what we're really good at is creating um, web infrastructure or the infrastructure for websites right. that are specifically for real estate. So there are lots of newspapers that have real estate sections, yeah. and historically they're not that great. Right. Right. So that's why people go to Zillow as opposed to going to their local paper. Um, and then agent and broker websites have historically not been that great, and the ones that have been, people have spent you know, fifty, dollars $100,000 to build them. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we've built this infrastructure that is really malleable. So we um, have a relationship with Hearst. We power all their newspapers, and those are you know, everything, San Francisco Chronicle, Houston Chronicle, and a whole bunch of others. Um, we've got many other publishers that are, I can't, publicly announced yet, but there'll be announcements coming out yeah. uh, where we power their sites. And then we also have made an incredible deal uh, or relationship with the NAR where our we lowered the price of our websites to $10 a month. Yeah. 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 And then we made um, an exclusive offer for NAR members where it's $5 a month for a website. And 
hosting and all that kind of stuff and you can do MLS integration and it's just it's a no brainer at this point. A game changer actually. Yes. A yes. Full on game changer. I'm going to get out there and say it publicly. I so yeah, I mean everyone's shaking their heads going holy Hannah like I can't even believe that just happened. Um, how do other how do other uh, website companies compete with with that? That's a that's a tricky yeah. one. Yeah. Well, I actually think that there's a huge opportunity because we are not custom website builders. We do not do the other ancillary activities that are required once you have a website. Such so as? We don't do content marketing for people. Um, we don't necessarily do email marketing for folks. We don't do the marketing automation that's required once you're building a real funnel with your website. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that can all be built on our platform, right. but that's not our business. That's that's to me the value add. Like if you think of, of Squarespace or Shopify, you can sign up for one of their base packages, mm -hmm. but you can also spend, you know, a few thousand dollars or five thousand dollars getting someone to customize that or build it or integrate yeah. it with the tools that you already use. Mm -hmm. And so there's a there's a lot of value to be added when technology is commoditized. And it's not a it's not a a win all you know one sum game. So I have two questions for you. One is yeah. how important do you think design and packaging is moving forward? And yeah. then and then the second one is is what is the vision? If you're dropping your po price point to five dollars, what is the revenue model for place to where are you making all yeah. your money and where are you going? Yeah. So let me answer the first one. Um, uh, rephrase the first one again, just on design. I got the second one. How important okay. is design oh, yeah, in the market? Yeah. Oh, I think I think it's exceptionally important. To me, it's it is so hard to stand out in the world in general. Mm -hmm. And we are such visual creatures and we're tactile creatures. Right. And so any representation of information on the web needs to be in a way that the individual that's consuming it can easily consume it. So here's an example. Traditionally, you'd have a website that has a lot of text on it. So if someone doesn't think about the typography, the type of font, the spacing, the lighting, or the contrast mm -hmm. of that font, it means that someone who might be challenged with sight in any way, shape, or form can't read it. Right. Or once you shrink that down to a smaller device, what do you do? Like, do you, are you constantly pinching? Do you need a magnifying glass? Like, how do you consume that information? Right. And so design and the way things are presented will make it really easy for some to stand out and the ones that don't quite get that will their leaflets will be on the floor in the street mm -hmm. i mean that's that's just a reality right so that's that side of it um the other side is when i think about vision is um i've been asked this question a, a few times and i was asked at the conference which is you know what are you guys trying to do and if i think about companies that that we admire that have reinvested in technology and reinvested their potential profits mm -hmm. in building better stuff. Mm -hmm. Think about think about what Amazon has done. They've spent 20 years reinvesting shareholder potential shareholder profits into the things that we have taken for granted, which is same day shipping, you know, Prime, they don't make money on Prime, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But what they've done is they've built the most impressive online marketplace that has ever existed, Agreed. with the exception of now Alibaba, right? right? And so that kind of commitment to building the best product possible, as opposed to thinking short-term revenue, mm -hmm. is the decision that you make early on with your company of what is the ultimate goal of that company? How big do you want to grow? Are you looking to cash out? Because if you're looking to cash out, this is not the business model yeah. to do. Yeah. Because we are not going to stop next year and all of a sudden have big checks and go to Tahiti and sit on the beach. Right. This is about growing something that actually changes the industry. You only do that by reinvesting to scale your business. Which is, I, so I, I mean, I love uh, this vein of discussion because, uh, I mean, I'm a big believer in all in. Yeah. I, 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 commitment is so vital and, and having that long-term vision, I think, is so vital. But then creating a space, like I mean, I give the company credit because creating a space where the people who work for the company 
buy into that vision and commit for the long term is a huge achievement in itself. Oh yeah, yeah. Talent is, um, it's one of, nurturing talent is one of the un unsung talents that one needs to build. And it's a nonstop evolution. And so one of the things that I think about is we interview, we do a very long interview process because we're not only interviewing for expertise, mm -hmm. we're interviewing for culture fit and trying to discover what one's personal goals are. Like who are they and where do they want to go and do they want to be a part of building something? And what I'll say about, we'll say, the newest generation, Gen Z, I think is what they're calling yeah. them, right? <laughs> and, then, track, yeah. and then the Gen Ys mm -hmm. are so interested in making a difference. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of my father, right? My father was a hippie and wanted to change the world, which I think so many in that generation really participated, like if we think about civil rights and what's, you know, the rights of women and the rights of him, like, all of the, the groups that now have a place in the world, that, tra that happened at that point in time. And I think that those generations that are now want that same thing. And so when I'm thinking about team, I'm thinking about how do we make an impact in our industry, mm -hmm. but then how do I make an impact for this person and how, how can they be a part of something that's really, um, we're not just trying to sell a widget and we're not just trying to make a fast dollar, we want to build something that can change people's lives. Well, and when you work for a company that has that kind of uh, agenda, I mean, that's something that you can take a lot of pride in and feel like you are making an, an impact, I think. Which, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if that's just Gen Y and Gen I, I want to do that. Well, I think everyone does, but I think they're really adamant about it. And they, you know, I think when we get older, right, we have obligations. And so we settle. When you're Gen Y and Gen X, you're like, hey, like my son, agreed. <laughs> my oldest son is 20, yep. and he took a year from college, quit his job. <laughs> I, I got him a ticket to uh, California. He bought a car out there and decided he was going to drive back because he's like, I'm working for a company that doesn't respect who I am, and I don't believe in what they're doing. I want to find that thing. Now, it's idealism to a certain extent, yeah. but he's on a mission to find something where he feels like he can change things. My 26-year-old did the same thing. Five years in at uh, CB yeah. Rail, he's like, if I don't get out now, I'm going to be a company man forever. So he's back yeah. at digital music school. That's great. Yeah. Hey, more power to him. I mean, who am I to tell him that that path is not going to be the right path for him? I, I am a firm believer of you've got to, you have got to do what you've got to do. If, you, yeah. if your heart is calling you to do something, and you need to go and explore that. Yeah. It would be really nice if I didn't have to spend quite so much money. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It's good. It's all good. You know, these are fascinating topics. Um, I'm, I don't want to keep you much longer. I, I always wrap these conversations, Seth. I yeah. don't know if you're familiar, but I usually ask a legacy question. Okay. Um, and one of the reasons that I do that is because typically the people that I speak to are people I ultimately am really drawn to and respect professionally yeah. and personally. You are no exception. I just think well, you're you an much. amazing uh, example and, and leader. Talk to me a little bit about the legacy that you would like to leave and, and the yeah. impact that you're trying to make. See, that's really interesting because I haven't thought about that much. I mean, I, I think that without having a real canned thought, the things that I have always thought about, regardless of my business, is building a bit, building businesses or building opportunities that my children can be proud of, mm -hmm. whether they want to participate or not, and that I can be proud of, and that, and this may sound corny, but I have friends that I have made along the way in every business that I've created that are people that I've hired, customers that I've had, and that to me is that's the benefit of doing work in the way that you can feel that you've brought integrity to it mm -hmm. is that there's nothing to be ashamed of like you may make mistakes which you i can guarantee you you will mm -hmm. but you have touched the people that have been your customers and your colleagues and your friends in a way that has left them in a better place that's really my goal and i have to really think about legacy long like beyond that because i haven't 
uh, there's not a building I want to leave. I don't need to <laughs> travel to every country. Like, I don't know what those things are. Yes. Um, but I just, I do know that I like, I like impacting people in a positive way. Well, you do that every single day. And, well, thank you. Uh, thank I, you very much. I am so grateful and honored that you took the time to have this conversation with us. I do think it's a thank conversation you. that matters. Yeah, um, it is a great conversation. We could dig in on a lot more, and maybe we'll have you back soon. Okay. Awesome. I'd love it. Okay. Well, best of luck to everything that's going on with your company. Yep. Uh, we'll be watching you for sure. Thank you very much, Terry. Thanks, Seth. All right. Bye.